Hey guys, what's going on? This is Brian with Games Under Pressure bringing you another Dying Light video. This time, I'm going to show you my playthrough of the Bozak Horde from uh, Trial 1 all the way to Trial 20, and hopefully try to communicate some of the strategies, some of the things that I learned in trying to complete this. And it, at first, it seems really, really difficult. But if you know what you're doing, and if you have a little bit of strategy, it actually becomes very, very easy. I didn't think that was possible when I first started playing it, and I could only get to, like, Trial 8, but it, that is the case. So, first of all, uh, these first areas are pretty, pretty standard. I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. The one thing in this section that I will say is avoid the pillars with the uh, fire extinguishers on them. Sometimes the zombie uh, that comes from the ceiling right above the burning car, if he's on fire and he touches one of those fire extinguishers, it'll explode. And if you're near it, it will trigger this uh, chain reaction and it'll explode a lot of the like propane tanks and some of the other flammables in the area. So I, I was having a hard time figuring that out because all of a sudden I would just blow up and die and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And there are little flammable things like propane and, and uh, oxygen tanks, things like that. So just make sure that your by, uh, I would stick around this area, make sure that you're by pillar number two there. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it just makes things a little bit easier. In this uh, section, the, the thing that I didn't know when I was first playing is you don't actually have to kill all of the enemies before you run to disarm the bomb. Now, typically, uh, you're going to want to kill all the enemies because it just makes it a little bit easier. But if you're short on time, if all of a sudden you have 15 seconds left and you're, you're worried about getting to the bomb on time, like I am uh, right here uh, with only 17 seconds left, you can just abandon the enemies, hopefully try to beat them to the bomb so that they're not hitting you while you're opening the case, and then do that. But if, if So if you're short on time, just run right to the bomb and then take care of the enemies after. They won't let you move on to the next trial until all the enemies are dead, but at least you don't have the timer hanging over your head. So that, that's something to keep in mind. This right here is actually my go-to weapon throughout this entire Bozak Horde, and that is the scythe right there. So it, it's it's the, the little sickle that I'm, I'm using. With this, the next challenge is the bolter challenge. And what I like to do, you can catch the first two bolters right as they get out of the van, and I'll show you here. So the minute the van opens, slice that guy, get this guy, and then you can run to do the others. Now, the one thing that I didn't do in this video, which I absolutely should have done, it, it uh, would have come in handy, is don't rush through this. You don't really need to. Just uh, get those two bolters right as they get out of the van, and then immediately get their health kits, their med kits. It will come in handy like you wouldn't believe later on. And do the same for all four of them. So by the end of this, you should have four med kits at your disposal. Uh, you don't really need it until you get to the stadium at the very, very end of this video. But when you're there, you're going to be very happy that you have them. And there are three different bolter sections, or three or four, in uh, the Bozak Horde. You're going to want to do that with all of them. Uh, it, it, maybe with the exception of the last one. With this one, you can actually be in position by the time that um, the, the timer starts. So immediately run to that van, jump over the gate... Get in position. One zombie comes out of the vent there. Another comes out about halfway up the wall. So if you're quick, you can typically uh, take out both of them very easily. Get the med kit in there. Again, the med kits come in handy like you wouldn't believe later on. And then as soon as you're done getting this bomb, start running. You don't have to wait for this other trial to technically start before you start running. So just book it. And this time you're going to go outside. You're going to go to that little uh, terrace area outside. So once you're out here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disarm the one right in front of you here. And uh, this one is uh, a decoy. And uh, uh, I never wanted to get the decoys at first. Uh, but what's nice is that if you get a decoy... You can actually break it down. I'm sorry, this one was the, the bomb. Uh, but the next one is a decoy. 
and the decoy actually comes in handy later if you have a weapon that breaks and you want to use it, like I want to use the scythe. If you have a weapon that breaks and you have a garbage sword like this, what you can do is you can dismantle it, get metal parts, and you can use those metal parts to then repair your weapon of choice. So you might be tempted to skip over some of the garbage swords, but I found uh, picking them up might, might come in handy later if you have a favorite weapon. So these are fairly uh, straightforward. Using the little canopies there, you can jump down. Just be careful when you jump. If you press a little bit too far when you're uh, free falling, if you press a little bit too far, you have a tendency to overshoot some of those. Uh, it's a lesson that I learned the hard way a few times. But again, this is this is fairly straightforward. If you're going to uh, try to get to the next level, always run against um, those platforms with the wall between them. It just makes it a little bit easier. Every once in a while, dying light can be really, really weird. Um, in not recognizing ledges and that's something that I ran into a few times with this because you're in such a rush maybe you're not uh, taking the time necessarily to, uh, to to really plan your um, your approach there so always do it with the, the panel in between so you have a little bit of an assurance policy there with this next one, uh, I don't do this correctly, I don't believe, in this video, but uh, what you're going to want to do is the minute this door explodes with the goons that come out of it, you grab the propane tank and just chuck it right in there. Now, you have to wait a second because you don't see it, but there's actually an invisible wall there for uh, a split second, and you can see that I didn't quite do it right, and uh, I, I got blown up by it. Um, and uh, yeah, trying to trying to hit it with my, my knives. That didn't work. But if you if you time it and you hit them as they come out, it'll explode, and you'll be good. It, it's, they're they're dead with one explosion. So that's the easy way to do it. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit here. It's been a long night trying to get this done. I think this is probably like the tenth time I've done this. So. Uh, they all sort of blend together. But, yeah, these guys are, are very easy to take down. I don't think they've ever uh, killed me, so... And as soon as those guys are done, you're going to want to run over here, grab some of these items. Um, you don't get anything crazy, but the Molotov does come in handy when you're in the stadium. And this is the, another bolter challenge. Now, like I said earlier, you're going to want to keep all of those health kits that you get. Um, but you can also, like with the first one, sort of time it. So if you stand here, they all fall down, and you have a split second. You can usually take out two or three by the time they actually touch the ground. You're going to want to take all those med kits, which, again, I failed to do, and it really came back to fight me later. Uh, but then it's just a matter of running these guys down. If you have some of the throwing knives from the first area, you can use those. That typically, when they're in the, the straightaways, that makes it a little bit easier to take some of them out. But for the most part, um, these guys are fairly straightforward. And always, always, always grab those med kits. I can't stress that enough. See, now I'm doing my due diligence here and actually picking up all of those and practicing what I preach, but... All right, so uh, another disarming challenge. What you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna get the one on the end here on the, the far right-hand corner of the map, and uh, it's on the third level there. So it's, a, it's the highest one. Again, use the little sections with uh, the panel in the back so that you don't uh, fall through like I just did. Sometimes it can be just a little finicky. And especially when you're trying to rush. But I, I found that the, the timers, if you know what you're doing, they don't really rush you along that much. It's almost a psychological thing. You're, you're sort of battling your own psyche because you think that you have to rush, but in most of these circumstances, if you know what crate has the bombs, if you know where you're going, because it's not randomized, if you know what you're doing, you can get this done with 
35, 40 seconds left some of the time. So it's this one on the far right-hand corner. And then the other one is uh, the crate that's a little bit hidden. And it's on one of the balconies over here. So you're going to run to the opposite end and jump down onto this balcony over here. You can disarm that, and you can see that I'll have this done with about 40 seconds left on the clock. So once you know what you're doing, you don't have to rush. You can take your time, unless you want to try to get a high score for the leaderboard or whatever the case is. Yeah, this should motivate you. You lose, you die. Keep on running. Otherwise, you will die in pain. So with this one, uh, it's another checkpoint challenge. So again, use the canopy to get down. And once you're down, jump through the orange. That'll trigger it. And the if, if you stand on this platform and you go about three quarters of the way through, you can typically, uh, and see I went too far on this one, but you can typically uh, get the first checkpoint before it even starts. Again, this is, this is one of those that if you do it right, you should have about 35 seconds at, left at the end. So don't rush. Take your time on this one. And um, I'll, I'll show you a little trick at the end. So what it's going to do now is it's going to make you go back the opposite way. And when I first played this, I didn't see it. But between this, the last trial and this trial, they actually give you a little zip line here, and that appears um, between the trials. So if you don't see, if you didn't see it uh, previously, you can use that. Now this trial is the one that really took me a little uh, a while to figure out. What you're going to do is they, they sort of fool you here. They start you off with the the canisters on the opposite end, and those are actually the more difficult ones to use. So you're going to run to the opposite balcony where there are four of the gas canisters. And the minute it starts, what you're going to do is you're going to keep uh, uh, tapping X so that you pick one up right when the timer goes down. And you're going to do all four of these. You only need three to throw into the hole to, to beat it, but you want to have one as sort of an insurance policy. So go over here. Be very careful when you're going to throw it. Throw it onto that walkway and then do that for all four of them. It's you got to be a little bit careful because every once in a while these gas canisters can take a weird bounce or if you have one on the walkway and you hit it with another sometimes uh, weird physics stuff can happen so you want to be very very careful try to not hit the other canisters on there just for uh, for safety reasons but once you have all four up here what you're gonna do is uh, one by one you're gonna take them to this uh, canopy over here, the red one. You're gonna throw it onto the red one. You always want to try to overshoot it a little bit because if you don't, uh, chances are you're not gonna get enough distance on these gas canisters to actually stay on this uh, canopy here. They do throw a demolisher at you. The demolisher is on the ground, but if you, you you can actually just sort of ignore him. You don't have to deal with him. You don't have to beat him. You don't have to do anything. And if you position yourself carefully on the red part, which I'll show you in a second, chances are you can um, avoid all the rocks. You can avoid him entirely. So for the sake of this, if you're doing it this way, you can completely ignore the demolisher. I know that's a little bit difficult because uh, those guys are pretty freaky, but you, you can just ignore them. Once you have three, and it looks like the demolisher knocked the other one off, um, once you have three, you can jump down there, position yourself so that the rocks from the demolisher can't get you, and then what you're going to do is aim much higher than the hole itself. So I typically try to go um, to the middle of the silver uh, stripe up there. And 
typically that gives you enough distance on these gas canisters um, to, to get them in. Yeah, you can't, you can't really go too high. So keep it up there as, as much as you can. The minute that one's done, you're not timed here, but if you're looking for um, a better time, you can rush down. And I, again, I didn't see this part, but there is a zip line over this fan that makes things very, very easy. I missed that the first playthrough. Um, and then you go to one of like this weird sort of game of yesteryear callback area where you're on the top of an elevator and enemies start raining down on you. This one, there's no strategy involved. There's no timer. There's nothing. So you can just go through at your leisure and kill these guys. I typically like the scythe for this because it has a little bit of a range on it and it is fairly powerful, um, but you can use whatever you want. Okay, so with that out of the way, that's one of the longest trials. With that out of the way, you are in the stadium now. And th it, now here's, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So take everything out of this container. Again, you're gonna need it for later, for sure, especially those grenades. And uh, once you open this door, the timer starts. Now they throw some virals at you right away. And I think they hope that you abandon your uh, checkpoints to take those guys out. Just ignore them. If you're fast enough, they won't be able to catch up with you. Now, you also have to worry during this, uh, this little foot section here about uh, falling and falling into the um, outbreak zombies with the canisters on their back. In this, they actually turn into like kamikaze guys, suicide bombers. So you wanna make sure that you avoid the uh, floor section as much as you possibly can. So stay high, even if it, uh, it means that you, you have to take a second or two out of your way to, to, to keep off the ground level. So that, that's very important. And again, if you do this correctly, if you did any of the race sections in the single player campaign, this is fairly easy. Um, and they, they don't get much harder than this. So before you start this next trial, uh, and you start this next trial by uh, knocking down the crate that's suspended in the air, before you do this, if you want, you can go on the outskirts of this course because you're not being timed right now. You can go on the outskirts of this course and there are a number of different crates that you can open and get different weapons. So you have uh, shotguns in the periphery. You also have pistols, you have ammo, you have firecrackers, things like that. So here is another bolter section. And this one is fairly straightforward again. If you rush to where the arrows are, you can typically take out three or four of them without actually, um, without wasting too much time. So that's something that you can do fairly easily. Again, you know, you don't really need all the time that they give you here. 
if you can take out three or four of them right off the bat that saves you a lot of running around and these guys also have a tendency to come to you so if you stay in one place most of the time uh, they, they will they will circle you and um, you don't have to do a whole heck of a lot of running when there's one or two remaining you might have to run after them and, and try to catch up to them but for the most part um, they're pretty convenient in how they come at you Again, I didn't do it this time, uh, and I regretted it because I, I died on this playthrough and I had to start over. But get those med kits. You will need them, you will need them, you will need them. You should, at the uh, by trial 18, have about 10 to 11 med kits, and that'll get you through it. Um, if you have three lives remaining, at the end of that, I would actually try to have 15 or so, because um, if you just as an insurance policy, you might need them. And the bolters are pretty easy, uh, even from a long range. You can uh, take them out with a shotgun. It's it's fairly easy. See, this guy proved to be a little bit tricky here. Okay, for this next trial, it's another kill all the enemies, and the, the, it's a little bit strange because it actually starts technically when you take out the spitter right there. And you can see all the little arrows start populating on the map, and those are virals. Again, what you can do is um, take them out with a shotgun. You can also throw these um, the firecrackers and then maybe even uh, hit them with... Uh, a grenade like I just did that seems to work but you don't have to kill all of them before you go to disarm the bomb so keep track of the timer you do have a lock pick here uh, so make sure that you leave enough time especially if you aren't really good at lock picking you can see that there again if you do it correctly you end up with a lot more time than you actually need but definitely leave that buffer so that if you um, aren't good at lock, pick, lock picking or if you it's on the other side of the map, leave enough time to get over there. And if you abandon virals uh, while they're still coming at you, if you're lock picking, sometimes they'll knock you and it'll, it'll stop you from picking the lock. So leave yourself with enough time to worry about some of those contingencies. With this next one, um, this was a little bit tricky. Uh, and this took me a number of different tries to get and so you basically go to the top here you grab this messenger bag and then you go into this courier delivery mode and you have to drop off something at all of these shoots right here that seems pretty straight is pretty straightforward but what they do is they throw these kamikaze suicide bomber outbreak zombies at you and they don't even need to get uh, hit. What they do is they run at you. If they're in range, they explode and you're dead. So you got to be very cognizant of all the zombies around you to make sure that none of them are the outbreak zombies. Because if you aren't looking and you're delivering something into one of those chutes, what will happen is a guy will come up right behind you, blow you up, and you won't even know what happened. And that's what kept happening to me. So just keep an eye out for that. And make sure that when you do these, you do them in a line. Because they're sort of in this circle. And if you can do these things, if you can start at one end and do it in a circle, it gets it done a lot easier. And another good tip is to stay on high ground. Do not venture down onto the ground unless you have to because the kamikaze suicide zombies there, they can't really climb too quickly. So make sure that uh, you're, you're on higher ground and only go down when you absolutely have to. And even then, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings and take out all of them that you possibly can because there's nothing worse than getting to this trial and then just not even seeing the zombie that takes you out. It's super frustrating. Get up and 
things in a balance. This one, again, is another um, rush one where you just run through all the checkpoints. It's, it's very, very easy. It, this one is actually probably the easiest one, which is strange because it's trial number 17. Um, but you just got to use the zip line here at first, and then it's just a circle. The only thing that you have to be aware of is the, they throw spitters at you, so you want to keep moving. If you keep moving, they won't be able to hit you, and you also don't want to fall here. And you don't want to fall um, just because of the, the time constraints, but those suicide zombies that I just showed you, those guys are everywhere on the ground floor here. So if you fall, chances are you will explode almost immediately. Uh, so if you do find yourself on the ground, try to get up uh, up to higher ground as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, but the better solution is just to not fall. And you, you shouldn't because this is very, very easy. So this next trial is a little bit tricky. You have to disarm uh, two bombs. The first bomb is a little bit hidden, and they don't give you a lot of time in this. So if you go to all four of them, you won't complete the trial. You have to know at least uh, where they are, because this first one is a little bit tricky to go to. You've got to jump onto the zip line, jump onto the cargo container, lower it. And what I do, because there are a lot of zombies swarming on the ground, throw a firework, distract those zombies, go in, and uh, you're going to have spitters. And for whatever reason, the spitters can spit through the cargo containers. So make sure, this is again where the, the health kits come in handy, make sure that you're healing yourself on a very regular basis because it's easy to just run around um, and uh, uh, forget how much health you have. Now what they're going to do is when you get to the correct door, what they do is they you hear Bozak um, say something. If you go to the wrong door, he will not say anything. So. If you get to the door and you hear him speak, that means that you are at the correct one. Um, so don't waste your time trying to pick locks and things like that. And yeah, you can hear him there. You know that's the door. Go in with the lock pick and uh, disarm the bomb. And if you do it right, again, minute and a half, a minute and five seconds you should have. Um, it's fairly, fairly easy. For this next trial, you're going to use the pistol that you got earlier um, that you should have by now. If you don't, go out and find one uh, because you're, you're really going to need it. This is another bolter one, and this is the final one, and they throw a lot of bolters at you. And it becomes a little bit tricky. Uh, you can't you can't run down all of them and hit them with a shotgun. So what I like to do is get the pistol. The pistol is a little bit longer range, so you don't have to get up close and personal with a lot of these guys. You can pick them off from a distance. And again, when they spawn, you should be able to take out a few of them fairly easily and fairly quickly. Clear the map a little bit and uh, definitely pick up the health kits from all of them that you can. You don't want to get into a situation at the end where you need a health kit and you don't have one because that would suck after spending all this time, uh, 30 minutes, trying to get to the end of this. But I found that the pistol is just the way to go. I tried hunting a few of them down with a shotgun and it just takes too long with the quantity that they throw at you. With this, you can pick them off a little bit from a distance. If you see them climbing, you can typically take them out fairly easily. And there are so many different levels that they go on. I mean, you're talking about three or four different levels um, in, this, in this stage. It, it just becomes a little bit too much to track all of them down and try to hit them with a weapon or to shoot them with a shotgun. So the pistol really gets the job done. Try to have about 10 or so med kits for this last portion. Um, they, they will come in handy. All right, we made it. Trial number 20. 
This one, it's tough. They throw everything at you, the kitchen sink, the whole deal. So what you're going to want to do is to gather all the virals. And there are, I believe, 30 that they throw at you here. You're going to want to gather them. So I found that firecrackers uh, really help to get them to congregate around a single point. And then once they all are, I typically throw a grenade or a Molotov, something like that to take all of them out very, very quickly because time is not your friend in this challenge. So get all of them together, take out as many as you can, and then I found that the shotgun is a little bit too slow and the pistol is a little bit too slow. So you definitely want to go with the melee weapon um, and that will allow you to get right in there. Typically these virals only take one or two hits to take down, so you're going to want to do that. Now the wrinkle here is that you can go through these gates which are marked on your map to give you a little bit more time. So if time isn't on your side, if you only have a few seconds, look for one of those gates that will give you um, upwards of a minute, minute and a half extra time uh, to, to go around and do your thing. So be cognizant of the time, be hyper aware of it, because if you are not, it will very, very quickly uh, run out on you. Also monitor your health. It, it, that sounds very obvious, but these virals here especially, they have a habit of swarming, and by the time you know it, you already lost a number of uh, uh, health points, and you might only have, like here, I have 10 left, so I'm, com I'm completely panicking at this point, um, but I just barely made it, I don't know how, I just barely made it, and uh, just monitor your health and try to get as many of them towards you at one single time. And you can see, this is why I've been preaching about the health kit, health kit, health kit. Because I only have three left, and there are still a lot of volatiles around me. And I still have a demolisher, so you can never have enough health kits here. Now that I have a few seconds on the clock, the gates will pop up again, so you can uh, replenish the time on your meter here and if the virals swarm it's going to be very difficult to get out too so make sure that they're not swarming around you make sure that you do have an escape plan even if that's something like standing against a corner that will help uh but once the the virals are all taken out you can breathe sort of a sigh of relief because the pressure is off that's the hardest part of trial number 20. And also, I mean, it should go without saying, but monitor your weapon durability. Um, I wasn't there, and I was hitting these guys thinking, what the hell's going on? And uh, So here is the Demolisher. The Demolisher, you don't really have too many weapons, and you don't want to go in with a melee weapon. So what you're going to do is you're going to use any of the explosive items that you still have. You might not have any, but if you do, you can throw all those at it. Molotovs, grenades, the whole deal. And monitor uh, the rocks. You don't want to uh, be in the open at all. Uh, those rocks can take off a large chunk of your health. And then what you're going to want to do is go around and find as many different... Uh, and monitor the time, too, with the gates. You're going to want to find as many propane tanks as you possibly can. Because that's how you're going to take this guy out. And you're just going to uh, get them all into one area. I'm gathering them here. And if you throw the propane tanks and you hit him, they will explode automatically. So that's that's the way to take out this guy. You will run out of propane tanks, and then I'll, I'll show you what you can do. Uh, but make sure you hit him, because uh, I'm not doing a great job of hitting them there. The good news is, uh, even if he if he charges you or something and he runs into those propane tanks, uh, they, they will explode. So even if you get a few of them around him, they aren't all for nothing. You can still uh, get the damage out of them. And keep in mind the time here. The yes. time is what really gets you. So I only got in there with three seconds left. A little bit too close for comfort. And the gates will continue to work. You don't 
uh, have a limit of the gates that you can go through. So if you are running out of time, you don't have to worry about it completely. You can find a gate, you can go through. Um, so don't feel like you have to rush through here and make a stupid mistake and get caught with a rock or, or something. You can take your time a little bit and not feel like uh, the time is against you. Now, I have basically depleted the area of, um, of, of propane tanks. So what I'm going to do now is resort to the shotgun. You should have enough shotgun ammo to take this guy out. And I'm, I'm searching for more propane and it just doesn't exist, or at least I can't see it. So, you do have to get up close and personal if you don't have um, any more propane tanks or oxygen tanks, anything like that. And what I found is if you can corner him like this, if you can keep a wall between you and still be close enough that you can hit him point blank with the shotgun, you can just sit there, be protected, and um, take him out very slowly at your leisure. This is probably not the most time efficient way. You're not going to get any, uh, you know, uh, uh, time records by doing this. This is not a speed run technique, but it gets the job done. And uh, there you go. That is the entirety of the Bozak Horde. I hope this helps you guys. Uh, it's a little bit of a tough piece of DLC. I struggled with it uh, quite a bit, but once you figure it out, once you have these little strategies, it becomes very, very easy. So I hope this helped. If you guys like videos like this, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. That's going to allow me to keep bringing you videos like this in the future. And um, as always, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you next time.